The purpose of this presentation is to illustrate how we place a thoracic left axillary subclavian intraorder balloon pump. To get started, it's important to know the items we have been using to perform this procedure. We use a micropuncture introducer set, a four French sheath, our preferences for the linear McKay intraorder balloon pumps, appropriately sized based on height and weight, typically a 40cc balloon. For those patients with pre-existing intraortic balloon pumps or for exchanges, a platinum plus wire is very helpful. In addition, when approaching the place, which I'll define and illustrate, when placing the roadmap wire from the leg approach, a H1 super torque catheter to get in from the descending thoracic artery to the ostium of the left subclavian artery is helpful. And for those patients where buckling is experienced with using the standard guide wire provided in the intraortic balloon pump kit, a 035 stiff exchange guide wire can be useful. And I will illustrate the use of these devices. This is an example of a patient without a previous existing balloon pump. There are one of two options to place the guide wire roadmap in the left axillary subclavian position. One, a traditional femoral artery approach. This illustrates that approach here using the right groin. That's compared to obtaining access by either the left radial or brachial artery. Once a sheath is placed, and our bias is to place a four French sheath, which permits easy manual compression after the procedure, the goal is to, by standard catheter wire techniques, to guide a wire into the left subclavian axillary artery as highlighted here. A head hunter catheter or a regular right catheter can be used to get into the left subclavian artery. Once the wire is in place to guide the perk needle into the left axillary artery, we first use topical uh, lidocaine per standard approach. We use typically a 45 degree angle and fluoroscopy is used to guide the angulation of the lidocaine in the trajectory of the axillary artery. Highlighted here with use of a hemostat, is the ideal side of puncture. Please note it is lateral to the pacemaker and outside the thoracic cage. Demonstrated here is the use of lidocaine for numbing purposes. We typically are a centimeter below and a centimeter lateral to where we anticipate puncture will be into the left axillary artery. Once the patient has been appropriately sedated using conscious sedation and we typically use Versed and, and or fentanyl plus lidocaine. The introducer micropuncture needle is then guided, again, typically a 45 to 60 degree angulation using fluoroscopy towards the roadmap wire. A syringe of lidocaine is also used as I approach deeper, then give more lidocaine for numbing purposes. And as you can see, the needle in the AP projection is getting close to the wire. It is important to never go beyond that wire. A cranial projection, as illustrated, can then help to determine depth. And you can appreciate here mild tenting of the wire. As seen here, the perk needle is advanced towards the roadmap subclavian axillary wire. It's important to never go beyond that roadmap wire. As you get closer, uh, you can actually start to feel the pulsation and then introduce the wire. And as seen here, you can appreciate the wire entering the subclavian and transverse arch. We typically then exchange the micropuncture sheath to a standard four French sheath to understand positioning and to ensure patency of the artery. Once the four French sheath is in place, we use standard contrast with saline and a 10cc syringe and perform a limited left axillary artery sheathogram as illustrated here.
Please note that this artery outside the thoracic cage in terms of the puncture site lateral to the pacemaker is free of significant branches. And in this case, there was no evidence of dissection or extravasation of dye outside of the lumen. Once the forefront sheath is in place, a regular guide wire can be used and advanced into the descending thoracic aorta. Given that the femoral approach was used to place the roadmap, you can appreciate for illustration purposes the guide wire in the descending thoracic artery position. Some patients may have a more angulated approach from their subclavian into the transverse arch in a regular right or lima catheter can be used to guide the wire into the descending thoracic aorta. With the wire firmly in place, the forefront sheath can be removed controlling hemostasis with, as illustrated here. The linear introverted balloon pump dilator should be used to minimize problems with placing the balloon pump sheath. I typically use both the smaller dilator and the dilator that fits through the sheath and with using fluoroscopy, it's important to be very coaxial. You can see here that there's mild buckling, so you really want to ensure you reposition to be as coaxial with the left axillary artery as possible. If there is continued buckling and or discomfort reported by the patient, the forefront sheath can be replaced and a stiff wire used to facilitate access. Going back to our original patient, I was able to successfully, with the use of the of sequential dilation in a twisting technique with the use of fluoro to ensure being coaxial, was able to place the introverted balloon pump sheath and dilator in without complications. Note the careful movements and rotation to avoid overt buckling. And you can see here the balloon pump sheath and dilator entering over the wire, the left axillary artery. Using a different patient example, illustrated here is the use of a stiffer wire, the 035. The point is to highlight the coaxial orientation of the sheath going over the wire without buckling as seen in the prior uh, example. The sheathogram demonstrates patent subclavian left axillary artery. In this particular case, there is a pre-existing femoral balloon pump. Once the wire is directed toward the descending thoracic aorta, the femoral balloon pump can be placed in standby in exchange. Going back to our original patient, the dilator is then removed Wire is left in place. Use the standard cath lab techniques to create a wire free of blood. Then the balloon pump can then be placed. Standard technique, just placing the balloon pump upside down. And again, using fluoroscopy to ensure appropriate positioning. The wire is below the infrarenal arteries. So one can safely guide the balloon pump over the wire following now the distal portion, which is actually the proximal portion of the balloon pump, ensuring the wire is properly positioned. The goal is to place what is now the bottom portion of the balloon at the level of the carina or within a centimeter or two of the ostium of the left subclavian artery. It's important to keep a very snug connection and appropriate suturing to ensure stable position. Standard intraorbital pump connection to the outside console is followed.
Fluoroscopy here demonstrates appropriate position of an axillary balloon pump with inflation as noted. Positioning is key. I'm demonstrating that we typically leave some slack in the introverted balloon pump with suturing of both the sheath and at the connection site to avoid kinking of the arterial port. Kinking can typically happen within the balloon or just outside of that first connection site or where the stat lock is in position. One should expect good augmentation, independent of the upside down balloon pump approach, as illustrated in this picture, with excellent diastolic augmentation noted. An alternative approach, especially for those that are introverted balloon pump dependent and the balloon pump is in the femoral position, is to use ultrasound guidance to place the micropuncture needle into the left axillary artery as illustrated here. Ultrasound can nicely show and permit you to distinguish vein from left axillary artery using color Doppler, compressibility, and the pulsatility. We've been using ultrasound to guide direct left axillary artery puncture. As seen here, one can place a four French sheath after a micropuncture technique is used into the left axillary artery while the ferro balloon pump is inflating and deflating in a one-to-one -one manner. Once the sheath is in place and access secured, the femoral balloon pump can be placed in the standby mode and the guide wire can be directed to the descending thoracic aorta. Then the intraoral balloon pump can be removed. It is our practice to cut through the femoral balloon pump once the balloon pump's in the standby position Place a platinum plus wire through the arterial port to maintain arterial femoral access and to upgrade to an 8 French sheath to permit either manual pressure or angiocele closure. Once the femoral balloon pump is out, thoracic axillary balloon pump can be placed.